for the girls who are looking for a spot or, or sit at the table. Stop forcing something that's not meant to be. Go where you're going to be celebrated, not tolerated. Hi guys, hopefully you're doing well. I am getting ready to leave for Lagos, Nigeria in a few hours. I got a last minute opportunity to attend Lagos Fashion Week and I kid you not, I could not turn it down. I've always wanted to attend Lagos Fashion Week and when this opportunity came up, I was like, yes, I have to make it happen. And we're gonna get ready together. This is going to be such a chaotic get ready for Legos Fashion Week with me because I actually don't have any clothes <laughs> to wear for Legos Fashion Week. Um, however, my PR team, they have organized some uh, fittings for me with some designers that are showing for Legos Fashion Week. So I actually already have about five designers who have confirmed about dressing me but other than that i don't have anything in my wardrobe that i'll be wearing during lego fashion week because it is cold right now here in seattle and in lagos it's going to be like 85 90 degrees while i am there i am gone monday until the following monday and i am traveling by myself for 20 hours because since it's like a last minute trip, Mikey is not coming with me because due to his work schedule. So I'm just gonna try <laughs> to organize some like different shoes for my closet and just like pack them up and um, whatever. I'll be able to style the shoes with, with some of the pieces that I'm going to be wearing for Lego Fashion Week. I am super excited and I'm just so happy that my friend Nika is coming and also Tanika is going to be there. So, ah, uh, I don't know. I just can't wait to experience this. I can't wait to experience uh, Legos, like just in general, Nigeria's like fashion in person and just their culture, the food. Like, it's just so much things I'm looking forward to. So, yeah, let's get this going and let's pack. We're packing and we're going to Legos. Right now, my closet is all over the place because I'm trying to get actually ready for winter season. Um, but I am bringing most of these colorful shoes because we all know that African fashion is very much known for vibrant color uh, colors. So I'm super excited about that. I'm from Zambia. So we love like really bold, colorful pieces. So I'm definitely bringing those. Um, as you can tell, it is fall and winter season here in Seattle, Washington. But I am going to see what I can pull from my wardrobe. Just like things I can wear while I'm like lounging around. So this is what I have packed so far. These are little things here and there. Um, you guys, I grew up with a very super OCD mother and she has passed that along to me. So even though I'm gone from Monday to Monday, I have to pack lots of undergarments, uh, my underwears, and I have to fold them like so. This is how I grew up, like folding up my underwears. So I have like my boxers, like I wear to lounge around and I have like my regular panties that way when I wear clothes. Um, this is super easy. Makes my life super easy actually when I'm traveling. And I think I'm gonna add more since I take about two to three showers a day. Yeah, mainly two showers in the morning and evening. But if it's like really hot outside, I two, three showers because I just always have to be constantly clean. I'm done packing up my shoes. And then of course I have my sister. My sister is always in my carry-on bag. I have a little extra pair of shoes that don't have the duster bags. And then some of my little clothes I'm gonna be wearing for going to bed. So, wait, what else? I can't forget. Oh, 
my camera stand. Can't forget this. And of course, I'm gonna have to pack my traveling light so I can do like an outfit of the day. Uh, what else? Oh, and then I have my Adrenaliyama traveling tote bag. Absolutely love this bag. I'm gonna travel with this one. And of course, I'm bringing my plain seam tote bag with me. Yeah, actually, talking about bags, I need to pack some bags because I just remember I haven't packed my bags yet. Um, yeah. Are you guys gonna be good boys? Oh, he is stressed. They are both stressed. <laughs> Shima's super stressed. It's okay, Shim Shim. Anxiety and full blown. Oh. He's gonna have a look. He's gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> Delta, right? Yeah. Let me show you guys around our hotel room. We are staying at the Federal Palace Hotel here in Lagos, Nigeria. So this is when you enter. And then here you turn right. And then there's a little seating area. As you can tell. Oh, wait, what? I just made it really, really dark. I want you guys can see also the water in the back but anyways here's like the sitting area and then here we have a TV nightstands is it nightstands no lamps <laughs> and then here as a little like dining area you can eat and whatnot and you got some paintings over there, a lamp. I feel like I would make that. I like to do my little outfit of the day over that corner. And then here, you can see outside the water. Look at that. So beautiful. You can see people like fishing and whatnot. And then I feel like that's. Yep, that's the port. That's part of the outside of the room. Beautiful. And then here, they have a little kitchen area. You have a stove. Then there's a sink here. Some glasses and whatnot. And then there's a fridge. And then moving on. And there's like this long hallway. And then here is the bathroom. So I was gonna tell them actually when I travel, 
out of the country, I do not use a tap water. I have to use bottled water. And then he had just brought me more extra towels and whatnot. Yeah, and then he had the sink, the toilet, a little trash can. And then here is it the closet to put extra clothing. Another closet to put our clothes here. And then here would be a place where I'll be getting ready every single morning, doing makeup, hair, and whatnot. And then my suitcases I haven't unpacked. And then here is the bed. And then there's another closet there. So super spacious. We love that. And a little nightstand and lamp. Nightstand and lamp over there. And then we have a TV couch to put my suitcases. And then we have a mirror. And then here, you can see outside again. Just view of the Atlantic Ocean. How beautiful is that? <sighs> There's just something about being in Africa. I don't know. I just, I just feel a sense of peace. And I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love. Love. Love it. Anyways, I'm going to start unpacking. But I just want to give you guys a little room tour. It. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Freelance Oil, and on this channel, I focus on fashion and lifestyle. So, if you love looking fabulous, I'm your new girlfriend. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends and your other friends so we can all be one beautiful community together. On today's video, I am super excited to share this with you guys. I can't even believe that I'm saying this out of my mouth, but I just got back from Lagos, Nigeria. I received an amazing opportunity that I could not pass by. I got invited to attend Lagos Fashion Week, and I kid you not, I bought my ticket two days before I had to leave. It was completely last minute. I did not have it in my calendar. Uh, Lego Special Week is something I've always wanted to experience, but I did not think that this opportunity will come this soon. And uh, my heart is full. My fashion cup is overflowing. What an amazing experience. Let's talk about it. When I tell you how happy I am. I just, I don't know, like just the whole experience of Lagos Fashion Week, I can't even put it into words. I can't explain it. You just have to experience it for yourself. And I can't compare Lagos Fashion Week to New York Fashion Week or any other fashion weeks like I have seen like i can wholeheartedly say this with my whole entire chest lagos fashion week is the best fashion week i've ever ever attended i've ever seen these designers are beyond talented let me tell you something africa is a blueprint for a lot of things and nigeria is killing it in the fashion industry every single day that i went to the fashion shows i was just waiting to experience more and more and more like the way these designers told their stories through their collections like every piece of my body was just like in so much like 
chills. I had goosebumps. I was transported to whatever land they were taking us with their collection. I am beyond blown away. But before I get into details about the designers that I got to see, I'm gonna start off with where we stayed at. So when I say we, actually my friend, uh, Nika, she's best in German. She's also a fashion and lifestyle blogger. And then also Tanika, she's best in New York. So we were presented, uh, when we were presented this opportunity, uh, it was like three of us and some other girls. And out of those people, it was just us three that agreed to uh, go to Nigeria for Lagos Fashion Week. When I tell you it was last minute, it was literally last minute. We found out like um, a, almost two weeks until the show. And there was a lot of going back and forth. If we're going to have our visas on time uh, to, before we had to travel. And I kid you not, I received my visa a few hours before I had to get on my flight. And then my husband had to print it off. It was just like a whole crazy trip like all over the place but i loved every single bit of it since my friend uh nika was not traveling with her partner and since for me it was a last minute trip my husband was not traveling with me so me and her decided to be roommates so we got a suite and it was such an amazing time nika is funny she's just oh my gosh we had a fabulous time uh, my flight from seattle to um nigeria was almost 20 hours so i went from seattle to atlanta atlanta nigeria and i landed on a tuesday i was the first one to land on tuesday and then nika landed later on in the evening around like 9 9 10 and then tanika came the following day she was flying actually from turkey she went from turkey to london london and um lagos so she came the following day which was a wednesday in the morning and also we have a pr team one of the pr um managers she flew in from london and was with us and just like basically taking care of things on ground and we just had an amazing time however we stayed at federal palace casino and hotel i want to make this very loud and clear our experience at federal palace casino and hotel has no reflection on the Nigerian people as a whole. What I'm going to say, this is just a reflection of the Federal Palace Hotel. I have never had such a horrible experience at a hotel than I did at Federal Palace Hotel. I would not recommend staying there. The staff are super unprofessional and super disrespectful when i tell you they're super disrespectful it's out of control and i won't go that much into details but however one person out of their whole entire staff that was super amazing was the doorman his name was julius he should be the manager of that place because the way he handled every single situation he was super professional I arrived first, like I said, on a Tuesday in the morning and I checked in into my uh, hotel and my hotel room was dirty, like dirty. And I'm like, there's no way this room is ready for me. Like they did not dust, the sheets were dirty, the toilet had yellow stains around it. I'm like, there's no way I am going to lay here. I am an African myself, okay? And I'm very well traveled. And I know in the continent of Africa, we have amazing hotels to stay at. And this place was not a reflection of Nigeria. I was like, this, like, this can't be true. I went and I complained 
And I'm like, this, you guys can't, there's no way I'm going to stay in this room. You guys, this, this room is not clean. All I wanted to do after long hours of traveling was to take a shower, rest, and wait for the rest of the girls to arrive. And I couldn't even do that. I told the manager who was there um, during when I arrived, I'm like, you have to come and see this room. This room is not clean. He literally came up and saw the room and he started apologizing. And then they ended up moving me to a different room. I, I was really like really frustrated. Like I just could not believe that they would actually allow a guest to go in that room without cleaning it, right? That was the first thing. Before we arrived, our, our PR team uh, asked the hotel if they have a steamer and iron uh, in the hotel and if this will be provided in our rooms. Because the reason why we uh, ask for steamers and irons is because we are wearing all these pieces from different designers and we wanna make sure that we're representing their pieces well. And that means by steaming them, by ironing their pieces before we wear them to attend the fashion shows. And we got towed. The next day I called in and I was like, hey, do you mind if I can get a steamer or iron in our room? And I kid you not, they said steamers and irons are not allowed in the room. The only way you can uh, get this is by sending whatever you want ironed or steamed to the laundry room and you have to pay a service fee. I don't have a problem with the service fee, okay? But before we arrived, we were told we were going to have steamers and irons in our hotel room. I'm super OCD. I don't like wearing great good clothes. I feel like that's not a great representation of when I'm going out into the world. You know, I grew up with a mom who taught us to like iron our clothes or steam our clothes because the way you're dressed is the way people are going to address you. And the thing about it, it's like, okay, I get it. Like us taking a clothes to get steamed or ironed right however every single day we were having different pieces being delivered to us by designers so it's just gonna be a, a lot of hassle of every single time sending our clothes to go get steamed or get ironed and then also we also have to create content shoot content in the morning or evening so you just don't want to have that um inconveniency like i wanted to be able to access the ironer steamer right then then if in case i change my outfit last minute i have that and i can take care of things myself and it was just became a whole big thing with the whole entire staff and we we didn't get that service we didn't get a steamer we didn't get an iron so every single time we had to send our stuff to get steamed or iron and be charged for it um tanika had her own photographer and videographer team uh, nika had her own photographer and videographer i hired a photographer so we are we're all working different like times with our um our teams and stuff nika's photographer asked me if you could take um, a picture of me inside the hotel where we're staying at and i kid you not the way the manager came up to us was like you guys can't take pictures here you can't take pictures inside the hotel and we we're like wait what we're staying here no, if you want to take a picture here, you have to pay. I was like, oh, we were not told that, that we have to pay to take pictures inside our hotel, whatever. He's like, oh, you can take pictures outside. That's no problem. But this was in the evening, so it didn't make sense for me to go take pictures when it's really dark. I love um, using natural lights. I know some girls that love the whole lights and flashes and all this stuff. For me, I work with natural light. I love that and being just being creative where I don't feel like everything's super staged so I was like okay whatever tomorrow I'll remember with my photographer to take pictures outside the following day my photographer came and it, this was eight o'clock in the morning I'm ready to start shooting some content um, before I go out to attend the shows I'm a morning person I like to get my work done early in the morning Every single day during Legos Fashion Week, I was creating content in the morning, so I don't have to worry about about it like in the evening or when I have to go attend shows or when I have different fittings. I've already taken care of that. I am outside with my photographer outside of our hotel room, right? And we're getting ready to start shooting. And I'm standing and posing, 
and then this security guard comes and he's just like you can't you can't be here you can't be taking pictures here you have to go early in the morning this man did not even come to me and be like good morning ma'am how are you doing are you staying with us you know unfortunately ma'am you can't take pictures here uh, around the hotel and if you want to take pictures as a fee nothing like that he just straight he just straight up came up to me on photographer. He's like, you can't be here. You can't take pictures here. And I was like, well, we were told yesterday that we can't take pictures inside, but we can take pictures outside the hotel. Now I'm confused because we were told yesterday, if you want to take pictures inside the hotel, you have to pay for service. But if you want to take pictures outside, that's fine. Now all of a sudden it has changed. It became a whole big thing. And I was just like super frustrated. Then I called um, our PR manager who was with us. I'm like, listen, this is what's happening. And she's like, I'm going to handle it. And I was just like, I was trying to be so patient. I was trying to be so understanding. And I called my friend Nika because she's also from Nigeria. And she can maybe have a way of talking to them. And she also speaks the language. And she came up and she was trying to like take care of this whole situation. And I'm standing there and I have three looks to shoot before for designers before I go out and attend the shows and whatnot. And I was like, I can't waste my makeup. I, these people are just dragging this thing on. It's like now an hour later. And I kid you not, me and my photographer left the hotel and just walked some distance in some bushes and there was like guys like just like sitting down on the couch and i was like hey do you mind if we can just take pictures of uh this outfit it's for legos fashion week and i have to create content and whatnot i had to bribe them with money and i did not care at that point i'm like i'm not wasting my makeup i'm not gonna waste my time with my photographer i'm paying for his service and then let me shoot these two looks. <laughs> the stories that you guys don't get to see, but you just see like beautiful pictures. But this beautiful black gown and this yellow dress was shot in the most really messed up area. But we made things that happen. And later on, I got back to the hotel Time to find out, you know, um, I'm a PR manager, like, took care of it. And we were all just disgusted with the behavior of the staff. There were just, like, so many things that happened. There was, like, the reason why we actually even stayed at the hotel is because they partnered up with Lagos Fashion Week, you know? It would have been different if they told us, like, hey, you guys are coming to staying at Fair Joe Palace Hotel. You have to be aware that you can take pictures. You can take videos here. Um, if you want to take pictures or videos, you have to pay a service fee and all this stuff. But there was nothing that was told to us. We were unaware of all this stuff. And I have never stayed at a place where I was not allowed to take pictures or videos. Everywhere that me and my husband have been to, they're always like, oh my gosh, please take pictures, take videos. Like, and they even show us like great places to take pictures and videos. I like, no, showcase this, showcase that. That's why you guys like, if you go and look at my pictures on Instagram, I did not show, I did not give them any credit or say the location I was at, nothing at all. I would not recommend ever staying at Federal Palace Hotel. I know better. It was super convenient because the shows were just literally like on another um, building next to the hotel. So we just would walk into the shows and then we had, if we wanted to change in between shows, we could just go back to our hotel room and change to a different outfit. So one thing about Legos Fashion Week is that all the shows, they're in one venue. And it's not like where in New York, where it's a like different locations, right? It's all in one venue, venue and all the shows are back to back. Like literally you can see for a whole, you can go there from six o'clock and get out like by 11 or 12 AM. And the shows are literally back to back 
back to back and it's it's something different that i've never experienced so some of the designers who like loaned me pieces some of them are showing were showing on the same day back to back so i had to be creative where i had to like change between like showings like okay this designer is showing like really early so i can wear their outfit first then like between like two or three other designers i can book it run to my hotel room and change and change the other designers um outfit and just give them respect that you know for them for dressing us and whatnot so it was convenient and then also like lagos like there's a lot of traffic traffic is ridiculous so the people who stayed outside of uh federal palace hotel for them to come to the shows it was it was taking them a long time they were stuck in traffic some for an hour some for two hours so for us it was super convenient even when i got super frustrated with staying at that hotel and i wanted to move uh pr team was like you know what just let's just stick it out because all the shows are right here and we don't have to worry about traffic or anything like that so we just ended up sticking out because you know what the whole legos fashion week staff they were amazing absolutely amazing and professional people i have never experienced that type of hospitality when it comes to fashion week this fashion wing has held a little girl in me. Not just the designers, but rep the representation that was on the runway, different body structures, seeing different hairstyles that I grew up like wearing when I was young. And just, I felt very seen and it's like I got to bring the little free and set her on my lap and just watch all the things that I was made fun of being growing up in a foreign country for being different and just seeing it being celebrated on such a beautiful platform. It's like I took the little free back to Africa and then the adult free was like leading it and like healing it. It's a lot. Um, I'm getting emotional about it because it was such an amazing experience. <laughs> um, I wrote this about it on Instagram where in America here, especially like in New York Fashion Week, us black creators, like we're fighting to have a sit at the table. We're all fighting for that one spot. And we find ourselves a lot of times being used as a, that black token. You know, we are just being tolerated, you know? Um, and we are all out here grinding and working so hard to just get that one spot. It made me realize when I was sitting at Lagos Fashion Week, front row and center, that all along, we have seats that are there for us. And all these people are just waiting for us to come and sit down and celebrate with them and to feel seen and being celebrated. It was such, um, I don't really know how to put it into words. I'm not going to sit here and cry, but this whole trip has healed so much part of me that it's hard to put it into words because you just have to see it. The way these models, these even creators and people in the industry and the people, the way they carry themselves with so much luxury and life and they're, they're telling their stories from their head to toe. 
you're moved by every single collection that each designer showed every single day. My God. Listen. I refuse trying to find designers to go and attend shows to in New York. I, I kid you not. I would rather keep waiting every single October for Lagos Fashion Week. Where I know people are waiting for me there. They're waiting for me to come and put on their beautiful collections and see them and wear it, create content with it. I kid you not, every single day we had back to back fittings with different designers. Some of the designers came to our hotel rooms and did fittings with us. That would never ever happen for me. I'm speaking to myself. That would never ever happen for me in New York where a designer is gonna come with their staff and show me that whole entire collection and say, pick an outfit that you want to wear. What? And then, then on top of it, if anything did not fit me right, they're like, okay, we are gonna make you something by tomorrow, we will have it delivered. Excuse me, you said what? So the first day of Lagos Fashion Week was on a Wednesday. That Wednesday, I had back-to-back -back fittings. I had a, a fitting with um, Imad Odusum. She is an incredible Nigerian designer. Actually, this piece is by her. This top I'm wearing is by Imad. And then, uh, so the skirt that I'm wearing is by Imad. We went to her shop, absolutely beautiful, where we're able to see a lot of her pieces up front in person, touched and feel them and try them on. We had such an amazing, incredible fitting with her. She is super humble. I kid you not, like you can tell the love and the passion she puts in every single piece she has. I was so excited to meet her and also to be dressed by her. Actually, I did not think that we were going to meet her, but that we're just gonna meet her staff and do the fitting, but she was actually herself there, introduced herself to us, introduced the collection and the, what's the story behind the whole entire collection. And then she also made us each custom pieces to wear for her show. She was actually the opener for uh, Legos Fashion Week. She was the first designer to show. And I loved every single piece she showed. Absolutely stunning. Her work is phenomenal. After meeting up with Imad, we went back to her hotel room where we had to wait for Peter. Peter Ashabar, absolutely love him. I had an amazing um, collaboration with him last year. He dressed me for the first time for New York Fashion Week in September. I was wearing this beautiful black gown by him. And from there on, we just developed a friendship. And when I found out that I was going to Lagos for Fashion Week, I sent him a DM and I was like, Peter, I am coming to your country and you won't believe this. I'm attending Lagos Fashion Week. And he said, I have to put you in one of my pieces. And I was just so happy when he showed up to my hotel room with his whole entire collection and told us to just pick any piece that we wanted to wear during Legos Fashion Week. And I wore this gorgeous red gown, absolutely stunning. I felt like a whole African goddess. And I actually, when I arrived to Nigeria, I had cornrows and then I was like, hey, listen, for this dress, I want to definitely change up my hairstyle would you recommend any hairstylist? He's like, I got you. I can actually have my hairstylist come to your hotel tonight and do your hair. And that's what exactly happened. His hairstylist came to my hotel room at nine o'clock 
and he did my whole hair the whole entire night. He did this little cute Bantu knots, but the way he did it was so beautiful. It was so fitting for the whole entire uh, Legos Fashion Week. It went well with every single outfit that I wore. After our fitting with Peter Oshabar, we had to get ready for a panel. Last minute, they put us in a program to be on a panel. Me, Tanika, and Nika. And it was such an amazing um, time we had. Even though I was so nervous to talk on the panel because I'm really, really shy, uh, I get nervous and talk in front of people but the conversation was just flowing and i just felt really comfortable because i you know i think it's because i know tanika and i also know nika so i felt like i was just in a very safe space we talked about so many different things everybody's gonna trust you know and believe what you're doing uh for me the why i got into content creating is because i grew up with a single parent and she didn't have much so whatever hand-me-downs I had, I had to make something very creative. But so nobody so would know what I was wearing because of the way I put everything together. And that's what really actually inspired me to start creating content, is to showcase to young girls and guys that you can look fabulous with what you have. You don't have to buy the big luxury brands. Start with the little things that you have. And before you can go full time being a content creator, be also very smart about how you go about it. Because some people you're seeing on social media, they have that luxury and privilege of having family that's backing them to pursue yeah. their dreams. So don't compare yourself to other people because this is not for the week, to be honest with you. So be very calculated before you transition to being a creator full time. And just also look at what's going on. Like, what is it something that people are missing that you can add and nobody's, that they have, they don't have it yet. So like, think about that in the, for a long haul, because now everyone wants to be creator, right? And then they're gonna burn out. But are you able to like sustain that? So you also have to be very, very, very smart about it. For me, this is something I'm very passionate about and I love it. I mean, I dropped out as a dental student and wow. fashion has always been something that's just in me. And also during this process, I'm like healing the younger free. And then also like I'm also bringing other young girls like, if she can do this and she comes from this background, I can, like, I can also do it. I never thought that I would be here, you know, in Lagos, Nigeria, talking on a panel about fashion with a girl who wear clothes from Goodwill. Mm -hmm. So just start with what you have and don't compare yourself to other people. One thing that really, really stood out to me is when um, one of the audience asked a question about staying relevant and um you know and being on trends and whatnot and for some reason i end up answering the question and i'll let you guys hear what i responded hey what's important to having your own personal style that's really important i don't care about staying relevant uh for me my platform is showcasing the different life transitions I'm going through and I'm taking my audience on that journey. Uh, four years ago, my sister passed away in a car accident and I was not going to show up dressed up and know that like, life is perfect when I'm over here battling depression and anxiety. But the way I chose to do so is to talk about it, how important mental health is, but I use that and used fashion with it to help me with my healing journey and just me also being African and talking about the struggle of mental health, my grieving journey, people are like, wait, what? This does not make sense to you as an African person talking about something that you're supposed to sleep underneath the rug and you struggle with it in silent. But I'm using fashion to help me to get that message, you know, across to other people who might be going through what I'm going through because I am more than fashion. I'm a human. I'm going through struggle like any of you guys here. So don't let the trends and relevancy 
fool you, you know, tell your story, either through fashion, through photography, through videography, you are more than that. And use the talent that God has given you. And this is what, it's more important for me to um, be true to myself and be authentic because fashion is bigger than me, but I'm using that to also heal myself. Talking about mental health has become not a big part of my life ever since my sister passed away. I've been very vocal about my struggle with depression and anxiety. And for some reason, talking about fashion, I intertwine that with mental health. And I posted a goal on my sticky notes in my room where I said I want to talk about mental health through fashion globally. And for I did not realize what just happened until later on I was in my hotel room and I realized, I'm like, oh my God, I just spoke about mental health, but I did it with through fashion. That I would never forget. I would never forget that experience. And then after the panel, we, we got to like, you know, mingle around with the other people who were there, the audience coming up to us and just asking us questions and like had further, you know, conversations about everything that we spoke about. And it was such a lovely time. I was actually wearing this outfit by Imad and I absolutely loved every single bit of it. Um, later on, they had an opening ceremony for Lagos Fashion Week. Unfortunately, I did not attend it because I wanted to get my hair done and I was also tired. I was super jet lagged and I don't think I was going to have in so much energy to go to the opening ceremony, but from the pictures and videos I've seen, it seemed like a beautiful, beautiful time that people had, but I had to make sure like I was ready and refreshed for the next day to conquer Lagos Fashion Week. The next day, me and Nika, the first thing we did, uh, we walked to a local little restaurant and got some Nigeria food. I had a goosey and fufu in the morning because I was dying to have like true authentic Nigerian food. Oh my goodness. There was so much food. Listen, me and Nika just walked over from our hotel and we found some food. Um, we didn't want to eat anything from the hotel. So we are having fufu for breakfast. Yes, yes, fufu for breakfast. So they have fufu over here. Oh my gosh. They have some meat pies. Oh, donuts. Mocha's there. Oh, oh. I'm fried rice here now. I can take my food here. Fiesta fried. Fiesta what? The rice. Is that I was eating through my eyes. I just like, I want this, I want that, I want this. Nico was like, it's okay, we're gonna come back. I'm just like, you don't even understand. I had fufu in the morning. You know, you should not have fufu in the morning because you're just gonna be useless for the rest of the day. And I just wanted to sleep. But I had, oh my gosh, the food was super delicious. Oh my goodness. The plantain, the goosey, the fufu. Uh, Nika had jollof. Oh, like we had so much food. And then I completely forgot that in a few hours, I have to go do a fitting. And on top of it, I have to wear other clothes for fashion shows. But it's okay. The Sphinx came in hand. When I tell you, Every single designer that showed, absolutely talented, absolutely talented. It's out of this world. So every single day they had about 20 designers showing. Yes, it seems like a lot, but when you're sitting there and you're looking at the models and you're looking at these pieces, these designers have created, you don't even think about how many designers are showing. You don't even think about the time. Before you even know it, it's done. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. I want more. I want more. I want more. There's so many designers that are super talented 
that showed that was it's it's hard for me to truly pick a favorite but there's some designers I really have to speak upon number one designer I really would love to highlight Peter Oshabar Peter's collection moved me in so many different ways Peter he's Nigerian I'm Zambian I don't understand his language I don't understand his tribe where he comes from but the whole collection he created for Lagos Fashion Week it was dedicated to where he comes from his roots I I, I understood it by every single piece he chose even the music the hairstyle the models when I tell you I was moved to tears that whole collection I was like wow 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 the next day when he came to pick up the red gun that I wore for his show I had to tell him that you just don't understand what you do with your collection and I thought that was powerful but when he told me that he did not have the resources to actually create a new collection for uh, Lagos Fashion Week. So he had to go back to his previous pieces that he created and he had to tear them all apart and then recreated the whole entire collection he showed during Lagos Fashion Week this year. I was like, this, are you kidding me? Me, Nika, Peter, his friend, and our photographer, like we were all moved and just started crying because this just goes to show you that when God has given you a talent, even if you don't have resources and stuff, you gotta make, you want to find a way to make shit happen. And this just shows you how people in Africa are killing it. You cannot take away their talent. If you look at Peter's pieces, every single one of them, my God, my God. I was blown away. He was the second to last person to show. And I thought that was enough. That was like, oh my gosh, this is it. Nobody's going to top this. Then you go money, close the show. And his show was also dedicated to his roots and his tribe where he comes from. The model, the clothes, the hairstyles, the body structure, different types of models are showed. And then at the end, he had Davido close the entire show. I said, well, damn. What? I was just like, I was shaking. I was, I was recording everything, but I just could even contain myself during their shows. It was so beautiful. Out of this world, absolutely breathtaking. And I thought that was the end. And then on Saturday, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is the first African designer I have collaborated with. Few years ago, Emmanuel dressed me for New York Fashion Week. And then later on, for my traditional Zambian um, kitchen party, which is a bridal shower, um, he made my husband's outfit. And I kid you not, he the way he makes every single thing, so beautiful. To this day, this is my husband's favorite outfit 
you want to talk about luxury, I went to his um, shop in Lagos. That shop is beautiful. As soon as you enter his shop, this the whole ambience, the vibes you feel, the way he has everything like sorted out on the hangers and displayed. Wow. From his whole entire staff, like, don't sleep on Africa, man. Do not sleep on us. We're out here killing it in this industry. I am so proud. I'm beyond proud to be African. Like, I don't care wherever I go in the continent of Africa, it is home to me. And I'm just really proud, like, to go to the, the places where these designers that I have been in communication with online and now going into their spaces and meeting them and just like, oh my gosh. I had a great time. We did a few fittings in his shop um, and I end up deciding on this denim skirt with the shirt. Uh, to go with it i was like there's no way i am going all the way to nigeria and attending lagos fashion week and not wear any of emmanuel's pieces and also not wear any of his pieces during lagos fashion week i would not let that happen because i am stupid loyal to emmanuel the way he his team made us feel welcome, the way they took care of us. Actually, I was running late to my fitting with him. So when I was arriving, it was actually, he was already leaving. So we like missed each other. I didn't get to meet him, but I got to meet Emmanuel. When he came out after showing his collection, he saw me in the audience and he and I both couldn't see, like couldn't believe that we're seeing each other. And he just ran up to me and gave me a hug. And the way I felt, it's like, you know, when you're proud of your best friend, like, you know, they're doing something, they're out here killing it. And it was, that was our first interaction of meeting each other. We met each other on his, um, on the stage during his show. And he's just, oh. His entire collection was just so beautiful. He's so humble and he is just taking his team and his talent all over the world. And I just can't wait to see what else is out there for him, what else he's gonna achieve, what other new collection he's gonna create. My God, I have to show you guys Thursday's fashion show. Thursday was the official Legos uh, Fashion Week when it started. Every single designer killed it. I captured so many videos because I wanted you guys to feel what I was feeling, but close enough because even though you guys were not there, I wanted to take you on this journey with me. Every single designer that showed that day, I captured it. I want you guys to sh see it for yourself.
for fire factory they dressed me in this gorgeous black gown absolutely stunning love love loved it then i had to change before Emmanuel show and I was wearing this beautiful denim skirt that Emmanuel created beautiful stunning out of this world it's not your typical denim skirt the way he has like the back detail of the skirt and also the slit in the front and I paired it up with this um, see-through um, top by him they did not have my size i wore this in a large because i felt like it looked really beautiful together when i tried it on in his shop and i paired up with my black ysl heels and then also this black purse by also a nigerian designer absolutely beautiful and then also my earrings i was wearing fumi the label this whole entire look was just so simple but yet elevated if this yellow dress look familiar to you you're absolutely correct because Meghan Markle wore this dress in red when she was visiting Nigeria recently and the designer Orire she dressed me in this yellow piece when I went to her a uh, shop for fitting and I saw this dress and I was like that's the Meghan Markle dress and I had to wear it in this color. Yellow is my favorite color. Absolutely loved, loved this dress. Every, oh my God. I just felt good. You know when you feel good and you look good, it's just unstoppable. I loved this piece. I loved wearing it during her show. She had such an amazing collection. She showcased every designer that I showcased on Friday. It was just, they killed it. They, they killed it. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the designers that showed amazing. But I want you guys to see the designers that showed on Friday. <music>
to Orange Culture's fitting and the designer of Orange Culture my god you guys gonna hear me say talented gifted out of this world whatever word you can think of this is what all these designers were like just their the way their brain works it's just like what how do you come up with these things this blue dress. The inspiration between that. So basically, these dresses, uh, matching dresses. When I started doing them, I've been doing them for quite a few years now. We do them with different seasons. We make them as tops, as dresses, and this is a technique that, like, for example, we've used for like accessories and things. And I wanted to think about new ways that we can use them because these are all these. These are like shoelaces, you know. Wow. And I was like, how do we turn this into something that's more modern that women will wear and feel sexy? And we want to go out of our house, out of our house, roped up like a little shoe. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh. 
Stunning. I am in love with that, obsessed with that. It has been a chokehold. <laughs> and I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> oh, love it. He put me in. This dress is made out of shoelaces. And when I put that on, the first person that came into mind was Beyonce. I'm like, I can see Beyonce wearing this. This dress is freaking beautiful. Like, you feel the heaviness of the material, the way, the craftsmanship that went into it. You can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it. When he put this on me, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to try anything on. He literally brought out whole of these whole entire collections and he's like, pick whatever you guys want. But when I saw this dress, I was like, I am putting this on. However, my niash could not let the dress close up. So he was like, I'll make you a skirt to go underneath it and then we can make this work. And it just came together so stunning. I felt good. However, my flight was on a, uh, that Sunday. I could not attend his show. So I actually wore he, uh, his piece to a different show where the designer did not have time to dress me. So I wore this piece there because I wanted to respect him and you know, for going out of his way and dressing me. So I wanted to capture this look and I also wanted to wear it to a show. And I, even though the designer for the show I attended did not dress me, it felt um it went well with her aesthetic and i just love the way it turned out but my friends nika and tanika they were able to go to his um show that he had later on that evening his he shows like around eight nine o'clock and i had to be at the airport by like 9 p.m because my flight was at 11 30. when i tell you i closed out lagos fashion week with the bang by going to one Fuga show. Huh, honey, you wanna talk about African luxury? Sis did it. She took us there. This is why it's important to travel because when people talk about the continent of Africa and the countries that are in there, they think about, oh yeah, Nigeria's a third world country, Zambia's a third world country, you know, Ghana is a third world country. But honey, America is also a third world country, but with just a Gucci belt paid with a credit card. But we are out here living life. You want to talk about African luxury? Wanifuga killed it. Her show, the venue, the ambiance of the venue. Ha! Hey! Oh my God. As soon as I entered, I knew I was in for a ride. First of all, the outfit her and her team sent over for me to wear, I felt like a whole queen, a Zambian queen in Nigeria. The headpiece, the pants, the, the jacket that went over it. Like, I don't think they call it a jacket, but that's what I'm gonna call it, honey. And the way my photographer captured this look, this was outside by trash. What you guys are looking at, this is all trash. And I purposefully did this photo shoot like this because to the world, a lot of countries in Africa, people think it's just trash and whatnot. But when you see and you go for yourself and you see for yourself, the beauty of it. So for me, wearing up in this outfit was like representing the beauty of this beautiful continent that I absolutely love. Okay. This was one of my favorite looks to shoot. I enjoyed every single look, but there was just something that moved me when I, sh uh, when I shot this look to a different planet. I absolutely loved, loved, loved it. And the show, when we arrived and we sat down, me, Nika, Tanika, and in our outfits, I did not want to come back to America. I say, which flight do I have to catch again? Where? Because I'm not going. I am here to stay. Legos. 
the way the models looked, their skin, their hair, the way they walked, it had a rhythm to it, it had a, some seasoning to it. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. Every piece told a story. You were moved by every single model who represented her collection. You can feel the creativity. You can feel the love she puts into her work. My God, she had a live artist who was singing the whole entire time. Like while the models walked. Wow. People are out here in Africa living their best life and enjoying their God-given talent and sharing it with us. And I am here trying to fight for a spot here in America. I didn't have much time to go out and really explore Lagos because I was strictly there for Lagos Fashion Week. But one day I did get a time to go to Alara and it's such a beautiful store. What? This is a place where they have created a space for um, the African designers to have some of the pieces there and they also sell them. And you can also see other designers from different parts of the world. But however, this is more really um, dedicated to African designers. It's like really luxury. I. I did not want to leave that place. I I didn't. I did not. And then the um the lady, I forgot her name, I think it was like Julia, Julian or something. She was so kind to give me a whole tour around the whole place. Like each of the designers, she was able to tell me a story about the collection. This is um it's a traditional um fabric for most especially the river rank um, areas like the Potakot women, the Potakot um, um, resident, we have the Bayosa, we have the Onicha to be precise, those living by the river banks, and also we have from Abia state. But he sources his own from Abia. But most especially the women, or let me just say the region, Potakot, um, Bayosa, Onicha, and Abia state, this is like their um, fabric. This mm. is what they wear. This is like their traditional attire. So the fabric is being made. So Emmy uses it to make any sort of thing. He has inspiration on. It can be a skirt, it can be a jacket, it can be um, a trouser, it can be a scarf, whatever. He, his inspiration comes to be us. Uh, they have where they're coming from. It, I was just like, what? And also, um, they have a restaurant attached to it so if you get tired of shopping you can go get a drink you know you can get some lunch or dinner if you want they also serve brunch and I went and I had I had fufu no I did not have fufu I had pound de yam and I had it with the okra stew oh honey it was okra prawns shrimp mushroom and um there was another thing in there it was so good wow 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 the okra the way it tasted it reminds me of the okra back home in zambia i killed it and they had this drink the best drink i've ever had in my life and it's non-alcoholic. It was mango, um, orange juice, ginger beer, and uh, they had chili. You can put it in there, but I didn't. I didn't want chili because I don't like spicy uh, things. So they had taken a, yeah, was it mango, orange juice, um, a ginger beer. Yes, that was so good. You guys, I am having this drink 
it is the best drink I've ever had. It is mango, lime, orange juice, and ginger beer. So refreshing during this hot day here in Lagos, Nigeria. And I want another glass of this. Yeah, this is so good. But I feel like if I tried this in Seattle, back in America, I don't think it's gonna taste the same because it's just like so much artificial things that's in our food and drinks. So I would just think about this every single time when I think about Nigeria, I'll think about this drink too. Yeah. It was so good that I went back for a little short period with my friend Nika the following day because I just wanted her to experience it. I loved it here so much yesterday that I came back to get the same Very drink. Ozzy. Remember, Very this is mango, lime, Very D -O -D. orange juice, <laughs> and ginger beer. And MOD. And so good. It's a virgin um, drink. Stop lying to your followers. Why is she? It's the truth, though. It's there's no alcohol in it. She's just trying to make. Look at her. Being the, being the little clown that she is. <laughs> it literally says a virgin cocktail. It's a nice it's so orange juice. We call it in Nigeria. This Zambia woman will come here and be uh, uh, modernizing everything. Uh, it's cocktail. Orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness I killed that food you have to watch this video you really have to watch this video I don't know why they gave me a spoon to eat my okra stew with my pounded yam I'm Zambian okay they learned the hard way. They saw me washing my little hands with my bottled water. It's going down. Mm. Mm. The okras too. Actually, the okra to be exact it tastes like the same okra back from Zambia and it's so refreshing. And then I'm gonna add on my little orange juice. I am more than good. Thank you for asking. Girl doesn't know what's really going down here because, yeah. Oh, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I forgot. I washed my when I was washing my hands. I had it towards the grass and stuff, the grass, the trees. So, you know, I could. This is my water I had from the, my bottled water I put it in the glass and I washed my hands I was going like this way whatever you, you get the point and all of a sudden I started going down the little carpet thing I was like what the hell was that I thought, I thought somebody was pissing behind me child so I used to American craziness but anyways This is so good. I'm 
I'm gonna finish this. Yeah, it has a kick to it. <coughs> Not a. <coughs> Ooh, chop. Not a huge. <coughs> a spicy. Spicy person. I love well seasoned food, but he and I are not friends. I don't know, I don't see the enjoyment of sniffing my nose when I'm having my food. I want to be able to enjoy my well seasoned food in peace without sniffing my nose every two seconds, okay? Because as you can tell, a girl is struggling. Woo! It's okay. Thank you, Jesus. I had the time of my life at Alara. I didn't want to stop. But then I remembered that my driver was still sitting outside. God bless him. I had um, I hired a driver to take me everywhere. A day was I think was like eighty dollars to have the driver for ten hours, and I was not using the driver for ten hours. I mainly used the driver for like fittings and, and of course to go to like Alara and also if I wanted to like withdraw money. And I highly recommend using this company for their service. They were super professional and they took excellent care of me. Uh, actually, also my friend Tanika used their service. When I go back to Nigeria, I'm using them again because their service was impeccable. I was like, okay, I know even though I'm paying this man to be driving me around and waiting for me, I gotta get out of here because I can spend the whole entire day here and I also have another fitting and I have shows to attend and I gotta take a nap before I can function because you know when you eat pounded yam, fufu or ishima, you're gonna be useless for a few hours. So I already knew I set myself up for disaster. We, I had a, such a great time. I, great 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 time there uh, i wished i could have explored more of lagos but unfortunately i did not because the way my schedule the way it was set up but I'm absolutely looking forward to exploring lagos more when i go back and of course i could not go to lagos nigeria without checking out adriana liyama's store i have been to her shop in new york it is beautiful, but however, her shop in Lagos, my God, she outdid herself. Absolutely beautiful. Wow, 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 wow. From the entrance to the inside, to the back, to the outfits. You guys know I have been a loyal customer to Adrenaliyama. And one thing I'm also very grateful is that they do send me clothes now. Um, actually, they dressed me for um, New York Fashion Week in February. They sent me some pieces last year during the holiday season. They sent me some pieces for the holidays so i just wanted to go and pay my respect and check out their shop in lagos absolutely beautiful the girls they have working there very welcoming very lovely uh, people i had a great time checking out her shop i'm sorry but her shop in lagos is my favorite like that i have never seen anything like that new york is a cute shop but i can't compare the two i cannot legos like that shop you update yourself absolutely out of this world and just to have that in africa child people are really living life back in africa and i am here for it because 
the impression that people have about African America, you gotta get off social media. You, the American education is failing a lot of you guys. Get out and travel. If you have the privilege and resources to travel, please go travel and experience different parts of the world for yourself. And don't let the social media or the stuff that you hear from other people dictate the way you view uh, different places in this life. Because, honey, you're missing out on a lot of things. Don't be shocked if you say that I got a place somewhere in Lagos, okay? Do not be shocked because Zambia is still home. America is still home. Hell, Nigeria is about to be my home too because I am absolutely in love with that place. I just had an incredible time. I was living my best life and I can't wait to go back and experience it with my husband, Michael. I've, he's just, he had massive FOMO because I traveled with him everywhere and this time I did not go with him. Wow. That was my longest trip uh, traveling without Mikey. I always travel with him and he, he was, I could tell he was really jealous when I, when I was telling him about my um my experience and just the way my trip went in nigeria he's like oh man i should have came i should have came but next time next time one thing that really stood out to me is when i got back here and i was on facetime with my mom she was asking me about how my trip went and i was telling her everything and then you know what she said to me she said you have never had this like light on you when you come back from New York Fashion Week. The way you're speaking about the um, your experience with Lagos Fashion Week, it's very telling. And it has made me realize she's absolutely correct. And yeah. I, I can't I can't explain what I'm feeling. I can't. Um, I just can't put it into words. This trip has been very much healing for, for me in a lot of ways. Um, go experience it. Go experience it for yourself. I I I can't. You you have to experience it for yourself. And I just I can't wait to go back to Nigeria. I'm looking forward to it. Lagos Fashion Week. To the owner, your staff, your designers, the designers that I showed, the designers that I that dressed me, the photographer Victor that worked with me, the the hairstylist Frank that came to my hotel room and made sure I was ready for Lagos Fashion Week. Peter Ashabar, Emmanuel. Orange Culture, Orire, Imad. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for celebrating me, for welcoming me, for taking care of me and my friends. You guys went above and beyond. This is a trip that I would never, ever, ever forget in my entire life. You have healed a little free in me. You've made me feel very seen. You've made me realize why should you keep forcing yourself to be at a place where you're not welcomed. When there's people like you guys are saying, come, come here, come here. We're gonna celebrate with you. We're gonna take care of you. This is not the last time you're gonna be seeing me in Lagos. I'll be back. I'm coming back for you guys next year. I can't wait to come back and attend Legos Passion Week. I can't wait to continue these relationships that have started 
and the relationships that I'm now building on from social media with like Emmanuel and Peter, and now we're flourishing it into now we beautiful friendships. I can't wait to share more of your talents to the world because you guys are freaking unstoppable. You're killing it. You are the freaking blueprint. No matter how much they try to duplicate your craft, they can't do it. They'll never be you guys. They will never ever be you guys. Thank you. Thank you for making fashion alive because man, it has, I have not been feeling inspired at all. I have never felt this way after attending a, a fashion week. My God, my God, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for this incredible trip that I talk about for years and years to come. I might even let my future kids know about it. And for any creator, oh, just fashion lovers would love to go and experience Lagos Fashion Week, do it, go, go. You will not be disappointed. You will not come back the same person. It has taken me a few days trying to just like literally process everything I have went through in Nigeria. And I still am processing. It's such an amazing high that I don't want it to stop. This fire that the people of Nigeria from Lagos Fashion Week has put in my body, I don't want it to burn out. I'm going to continue making the flames going. I like until next time when I see you guys. Thank you. I can't wait to see what's going to come out of this. I can't wait to see where all the talented designers, where you guys go. I can't wait to see it. Thank you for your hospitality. I, I don't even know. I'm like, I'm going to sound very redundant, like, because I keep on repeating myself. I just, I just don't know. I cannot put it into words. There's no timeline to this. I, there's just so much. There's so much that I can go on and on and on about. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving that seat for me at the table. Appreciate you guys. Until next time.